Greetings, horror fiends, and welcome back to Horror Culture TV. Um, in this video, I'm just going to be doing another update uh, on some of the movies that I've bought as of actually this week. I got all this shit this week, so uh, let's just jump right into it. First off, um, I'm going to start with the only DVD in the collection. This is a movie that I had seen a while back, which I found interesting. Uh, the director is, I could probably consider him one of my favorite directors in horror films. Um, and I don't think this is available on Blu-ray. I'm not 100% sure, but that's going to be uh, Existence. Directed by David Cronenberg. Existence, man. Pretty crazy shit. The other one, uh, Criterion Collection. I think it's the only Criterion in, in the update this, this week. But um, it's one that I've been wanting for a while on the Criterion. And I found this one at a decent price. So I was like, fuck it, let's go ahead and buy it. That's going to be Dazed and Confused. Dazed and confused. Yeah. Next one, I bought it up. Uh, I bought it up. Sorry about that. I bought it because I wanted to watch it with my daughter. Uh, me and my daughter have been actually kind of bonding as of late. I mean, we've always bonded. Mother and, I mean, uh, mother. Father and daughter time and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like she's been trying to get a little bit closer, especially when it comes to films. Obviously, we can't. I can't show her all my horror films. You know, it's... Maybe whenever she becomes of, of age, but right now she's uh, she's 15, so I am kind of picking and choosing like what I could watch with her. Not just horror, just films in general and stuff like that. She's she seems to be really infatuated, I think, by the the 80s films and 90s and films and stuff like that. Just that time frame in general, right? Uh, I'm not gonna go too detailed about why or whatever, but. It's pretty cool, though. I mean, to be able to find that your own daughter is wanting to spend time with you. Like I said, we always spend time, right? But whenever she's, like, really trying to take that extra step to spend time with you, it's it's badass, man. So, um, this film is uh, Beetlejuice. I didn't have it. I've seen it. I've seen it when I was younger, obviously. And I thought this would be the perfect time to pick this one up and watch it with her. Pretty cool movie. Um, this next one is one that I've watched when I was younger. And... Uh, I was wanting to pick it up, man. I just, I think I got the DVD, and I've been wanting to revisit it. And I found it for actually a really, pretty good price, man. I found a mistake, and it was like five or six bucks, and it's brand new. Um, and I want to watch this one with my wife. Well, I don't think she's seen it. She might have. I'm not 100% sure, but I've been wanting to check it out with her. And that's going to be a Amores Perros. Or Loves a Bitch. Amores Perros. Pinche Perro Amor. This other one, I know nothing of. But I picked it up because it was a cold red release. And uh, I don't think it was that expensive. I think it was like 10 bucks as well. I don't like to spend a lot of money when it comes to films. I mean, unless it's a absolute must have. There are a couple of holy grails that I consider holy grails that I would probably spend a pretty good amount of money just to own it because either I really love that film and it's like a, a really good addition that I want to have, like all the extra shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there, there's a couple of them that I would like, but. For the most part, I don't like to spend a lot of money on them, especially if I don't know anything about them. You don't want to blind buy shit and just be like, fuck, I just spent like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever the case may be, and this movie shit. You know, you don't want that to happen. So, uh, this is, like I said, this is a Code Red release, and this one's called Iron Master. Reminds me kind of of, uh, just by the cover alone, except for the werewolf, right? But, I mean, for the rest of it kind of reminds me of, uh, what is it, Beastmaster? Some shit like that? Yeah, see, Conan, no, not really Conan, but like Beastmaster or some shit like that. So, yeah, it looks interesting. I wouldn't mind checking that one out. This other one, it's the same thing. I really don't know much about it, but I got it because the cover looked pretty, it looked pretty crazy, man. That's really what sold me on that. That's uh, Delirium. It's another Cold Red release. Here's another uh, one of my all-time favorite westerns. Uh, Apart from being a huge horror fan, I am. I, I love film in general, right? But horror is like my number one go-to, my love. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do love other genres, man. So being that, I mean, I love I love westerns. I love a really good western, and this is one of my favorite ones. And it was the same thing. I wanted. I've been wanting to pick it up. I never really saw it too cheap, and this time I found it for pretty cheap. And I was like, now's the time. See, they're now or never. That's Tombstone. I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. This one, same shit. 
it's the same shit. I don't know anything about it. But I think when I bought this, it was like, I don't remember if it was five or three bucks. And it was a Shout Select. So not really Shout, or not really Scream Factory, but Shout Select. But I got no fucking idea what this is, man. So I went out on the whim and I said, fuck it. I can't lose, especially if it comes with a slip. I'm pretty sure if I don't like it, I'll definitely get my money back on this one. Like I said, three or five bucks, I really don't think I can lose with that. And that's the ticket. Is it a hot ticket? Did he get a parking ticket? I don't know, but it's a fucking ticket, though. A ticket's a ticket. Um, maybe it was a ticket that he got from watching the movie. Like, the entrance ticket, yeah, maybe. Maybe he was raffling something? Gambling? Raffling? I got no fucking idea, man. I gotta watch this so I can find out what the ticket is. Here's another one that, um... Not another one, but here's one that, that I had heard some stuff on when it first got released. Uh, not really controversial as far as like uh, being crazy kidding, maybe like a cannibal holocaust type of controversy and stuff like that. But if I remember correctly, this is something that got recorded like in Disney and Disney had a, threw a bitch fit like they always fucking do. Um, I'm not sure. Like I got to watch it too. Um, it does look like the film is, is in black and white. And just by saying that, I'm pretty sure some of you guys already going to know which film I'm talking about, which one I bought. I bought it for like six bucks, used copy. Slip cover is worth ain't shit. I mean, it's all fucked up, but I didn't really buy it for the slip cover. I wanted to buy it for the film, and that's uh, Escape from Tomorrow. Look at that cover, though, man. Fucking. I don't want to say whose hand that is, but. Full of blood. He's got blood in his hands. He's fucking sadistic. Holy shit. So, you guys know I like Tromo, you guys know I like weird oddball shit, and um, when I saw this one was, was on sale, uh, the first thing I did was jump on the trailer, because the cover actually looks striking, strikingly familiar, right? I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll, you'll catch it too as soon as you see it, but I watched the trailer, the trailer looked bonkers, looked fucking crazy, and it looked like it has pretty much practical effects so I was like fuck it I gotta jump on it man and that's uh junk bonds the return of the junk bucket doesn't that shit remind you of Texas Chainsaw Massacre a little bit look at that it's blood it looks like his fucking crotch got cut out or some shit man look at that shit damn what the fuck kind of shit are you guys have me watching man Holy shit. So this next film, I bought it. Uh, I bought this one actually from Facebook. And um, I got it for a decent price, being that it's uh, considered out of print. Um, and that's going to be, it's a, shout, a Scream Factory, I'm sorry. Scream Factory, and that's uh, The Squad. Unfortunately, when I got it, the guy didn't say anything about it. But I mean, I got it for such a good price or a decent price that it's really nothing to me, man. It is going to kind of bother me in the back, in the back of my mind. But not too bad. Um, and that's that it has the two hole punches. I don't remember him actually saying anything that it had the hole punches in the back. But like I said, fuck it. It is what it is. I got it already. I'm happy to have it. This other one is a film that I watched a while back. Um, and I liked. I wanted to upgrade it. But, I mean, it's not a great film. So you don't really want to spend a lot of money, like I said, to upgrade. But, again, I think. And actually, this one, I bought it along with The Squad. And that's going to be uh, See No Evil. I remember watching this one and enjoying it. I got to rewatch it again. So now that I got it on Blu-ray, I will. And I hope to enjoy it just as much as I did the first time. This next one is a David Flinch film. Or not, Sorry, not David Flinch. Not, not David Lynch. Sorry, David. You know, I love you, man. But I fucked up. Both Davids, I'm sorry. I apologize to both Davids. I don't know why I got you fucked up. But hey, you know what? David Lynch and David Fincher, David Lynch, David Fincher, come together, David Flinch. See, there's a method to my madness, man. Shit just fucking comes up in my head and just make a mashing together. God damn, that would be fucking phenomenal. Anyways, bullshit aside, the game. Same shit. I remember watching this a while back, loving it. And uh, David Fincher is one of my all-time favorite um, Film directors. I was gonna say horror, but 
I guess you can consider him a little bit of horror. Not he's not dedicated to horror, but he did direct Seven, which is one of my favorite films of all time. Hmm. But no, all serious aside, man, uh, he is one of my favorite film directors. Um, and the game, I love the game. I had to get it on Criterion. Oh, you know what? So I did fuck up. It was the uh, Days and Confused was not the only Criterion in the in the update. I forgot I got picked this one up too, which is also Criterion. Uh, you know what? Let's start going through these kind of quick. Rapid Fire, maybe? Nah, not Rapid Fire. I like talking about movies. Uh, here's another film that I watched, and uh, I got rid of it because I don't I don't remember if I had liked it or not. I was kind of against the wall about it or with it. And that's the eyes of my mother. This next one, same shit. It's another trauma flick uh, that I wanted to pick up. Checked out the trailer. Looks pretty crazy, man. Uh, Grindsploitation trilogy. Look at that fucking cover. So it's a trilogy. So it should be three films in here. Oh, over six hours of Fox trailers. Six short films. Bloods, Guts, and Gore the fuck man here's another trauma flick that i picked up actually from the same place and this is a uh, rose and victor no mercy looks interesting same thing i saw the uh look at that even boobs look at that ass mm, god damn i saw the trailer it looked pretty interesting uh reminded me kind of of uh, natural born killers in a way so it's gonna be interesting to watch Another one that uh, picked up from the same director who did um, Amores Perros, and that's uh, Beautiful, I believe it's called. Beautiful. It's fucking beautiful. I think that's the guy from um, No Country for Old Men. Another trauma flick, and this is a, uh, a twofer. It's a double feature, twofer, two for one. And that is... Um, Fear Town USA and the Slash Neen. I did check out the Slash Neen. The trailer for it looked pretty interesting as well. Wanted to pick it up, give it a shot. Mm -mm -mm. And um, here's another Scream Factory that I picked up because it was going to start to go out of print, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the Evictors. The Evictors. Evictor. Electronic Victor. And there's a couple of them, so it's Evictors, like an email. Make sense? Yeah, it does to me. Fuck it. And uh, Martin Scorsese, like that I wanted to pick up. I watched it a while back. Same thing. I didn't even fall in love with it the first time I watched it, but I did want to give it another opportunity. Maybe pick up some things that that I didn't catch the first time. Even though some scenes that I did see it when I when I first watched it, some scenes in it were actually pretty fucking phenomenal. Um, so I just want to give it another, another, another opportunity, another shot, and that's uh, Taxi Driver. And that's that. Um, that is the update. Not too shabby, not too bad. Um, I think you can tell that I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable with the camera and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy this update, and I will see you guys on the next one.